Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War for part three in our Confederate Let's Play series. We have won the Battle of Potomac Fort and Newport News, and we are on to the first of the Grand Battles, the Battle of Bull Run. The video that you're about to watch here was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, so there is a little bit of talking to the audience, that's again because it's from a live stream. Um, I'm going to start mixing in episodes with some history before too long, a little bit more production value in some of these, uh, but at least for this episode it will just be another live stream video. I hope you guys sit back and enjoy as we play as the Confederacy at the Battle of Bull Run. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you at the end. Alright, and we are back. We are ready to fight the Battle of Bull Run. Several miles east, the Confederate Army of uh, PGT Beauregard has deployed along the Bull Run River to guard the Manassas Railroad Junction. From the other side of the river, Brigadier General Irvin McDowell is leading the Union Army and is looking for a weak point to attack. The Confederate Army is stretched out to defend all possible river passages. You're in command of the left flank, which is likely to become the main target of the Union Army. The utmost side of your defensive line ends at a stone bridge. The Federals may assault this point head-on or maneuver from a western ford. If the Union attempts to attack your position, you will receive reinforcements from Beauregard and Joseph E. Johnston, Army of the Shenandoah, who are soon to arrive by train. Okay. He was wounded, and he wasn't part of our corps, so, you know, it wasn't really... He's, he was a different Beauregard. All right, you see here we've got 25,000 troops. 5,000 of them are, are our own. 20,000 of them will be sort of AI troops, which is great because those casualties don't matter. All right, here we go. Let's get started. The iconic Battle of Bull Run, the first major engagement between Union and Confederate forces in the Eastern Theater. Our main forces are deployed a few miles east of this junction, guarding the Manassas Railroad Junction. There's the famous Stone Bridge. Bull Run River is the natural barrier between our lines and the Union Army on the other side. To protect the left flank, the Army will need to guard all of the fords. Ooh, good luck. Yeah, we're stretched then. Smaller here near Matthew's farm is a good position to create a defensive line in case the enemy threatens our left. Henry Hill is another strong position for our artillery and must be secured. Your orders are to defend your position and scout for enemy movements. If the Federals attack, your reinforcements will be dispatched from the southeast. Alright, so the Federals are going to assault the Stone Bridge first. That's where the Battle of Bull Run will start. They also may try and cross this fort up here to the north. In addition to that, they will probably advance south from the westward passages, but we don't have enough men to guard those particular forts, so we'll defend Matthews Hill instead should they try and breach our flank. Okay. We are playing on Brigadier, Dif Brigadier General difficulty, legally speaking. Delay the Union until you receive more reinforcements. Good luck, General. Okay. So we're going to start. Hexamer will defend this particular position here. Siegfried will advance north into these woods. And Crocker, I'll go ahead and send west onto these fortifications on Matthews Hill. There you have it. The artillery will also uh, defend, and we'll go ahead and move the supplies back in case the enemy tries to cross. So we're deploying our four brigades as so. Well, three actually, it looks like. Well, four if you include the artillery, I guess. Move our artillery over here. Go are these again? Six pounders? Yeah. Siegfried will be deployed in these woods. No, keep the artillery here? I guess we can keep the artillery here. We're going to have to guard this ford. I mean, we don't have much of a choice there. What we could do is we could send some skirmishers over here. Siegfried's in a pretty strong position here in the woods. OK. 
Okay. Let's see where these guys go. Our counter battery probably won't be great. These are smooth bore guns, so they're not going to be terribly accurate, but we'll see. Matthews Hill is the only hill we can defend right now. I know there's going to be a, a battle for Henry Hill, but we've got to defend Matthews Hill at least so we can delay the enemy. All right, enemy artillery moving forward. Actually, kind of point-blank range here. I don't know if they're going to move their artillery. No. thought maybe they are going to move their artillery just across the, uh, across the way. We're going to have two batteries here, so they're going to have the advantage of firepower. We should have the advantage of better uh, ground, sort of. Okay. You're blocked, really? Alright, so our skirmishers can fire into the Ohio's flanks, Hexmer can fire into their front, and the artillery can fire at, I don't know if it's canister range, but pretty darn close range uh, into the first Ohio's front. I guess we'll see if it's canister here very shortly. Yep, canister. All right, so that Ohio Brigade is melting away. Skirmishers. Why aren't you shooting at these guys? Hmm. Okay. We drove them back for now. Rockers advancing on Matthews Hill. And we held off the initial infantry assault. We inflicted some 250 casualties while only losing about 60 of our own. I'm assuming there's going to be another assault here shortly, I would think. Alright. Okay, we could leave Matthews for reinforcements and use this brigade over here at the Ford, but I'm spreading myself a little bit thin just to make sure I don't get kind of surprised and overwhelmed. Right now, it seems like we're okay. Let's get our uh, supply wagon up here to re resupply these guys here. This is a weird formation for a fort. I almost feel like you'd be better off having kind of a forward defense. I mean, it's probably way too far forward, but this tree line here seems like an ideal defensive location. There just isn't really good tree... There aren't really good trees along this hill. Breeze, B's brigade has arrived to cover our left. Imbidin's battery shows up. So the, the famous Bernard B. Still coming up here. Arto. Almond. B. Alright, so Barto and B are showing up here. They're marching north. We've already got some troops in the position. We'll be north here a bit. Move these skirmishers over here. Hmm. 
I'm guessing there will be two more Federal Brigades that will show up north here. We're going to move those skirmishers over. We'll move Siegfried over this way so he can kind of get a little bit more firepower behind the bridge in case they try and cross. As our troops move up toward uh, toward Matthews Hill. One battery north, one battery south of the farm, one brigade north, one brigade south of the farm, two brigades on the flank of that fort, three brigades up on the hill. Forming into line, there we go. Hopefully the Federals don't try and flank us up here. Skirmishers don't have very good skirmishing weapons. Enemy artillery is starting to take its toll on Hexamer's brigade. Hampton's brigade... You guards gonna head up here. Porter's brigade's approaching. Okay, so the enemy's approaching on our left. Thought I saw something about a new brigade showing up, not just Bugard. Beauregard. However, I always screw up his name. Alright, PGT. Head north to help defend Matthews Hill. A little bit of a lull here at this point in the fight. Hampton's Legion, you're coming up in the south, so we'll go ahead and send you to the Ford. Hey, Bully, welcome back. Uh, the tally is we repelled an individual regiment charging across the Stone Bridge. We've got a couple of our brigades uh, deployed in defense of both the Ford and the bridge. Uh, meanwhile, the enemy is bringing, I assume, troops toward Matthews Hill. Um, and we're set up to defend there. You can see here Porter's Brigade. I assume that's Fitz John Porter is headed up here. Looks like they're going to test out our right flank a little bit. Um, this is the good thing about the game not having good weapons or the enemy not having good weapons at this point in time is um, we're not at too bad of a disadvantage for pretty much everybody having crappy guns. All right, what are these artillery pieces? Six pounders and six pounders. Everything. You have six pounders. You have six pounders. Everybody has six pounders. Um, let's do this, actually. I'm going to go ahead. Enemy has a cavalry brigade there. It makes me a little bit nervous they're going to try and flank me. So let's go ahead and get these skirmishers around here. Burnside's brigade's attacking. Ease's brigade is going to try and head north, it looks like. So we'll get Hampton's brigade up here on the run. All we have is a few skirmishers. Alright, we'll send these supplies north. It looks like the cavalry... That's the thing, is the cavalry is going to try and flank me. So I'm trying to get those skirmishers around here because we don't... We've kind of got an open flank over here. B he is defending here. He's got some artillery in support. Burnside's going to come up. That's a good point about the six-pounders, is they're a little bit lighter, so you know you don't have that challenge of them being slow and, and un, ungainly if they're trying to uh, send him back to his brigade. Howard's brigade with more artillery were heavily outnumbered, so they're trying to go around our flank to the left. Maybe we can go engage these guys. Get a volley off and then run away, maybe. Fire! 
Run away. Oh, that was dumb. That was dumb. Alright, so Howard's trying to charge. Okay, so their morale's quickly recovered. All right, the skirmishers look to be a good idea, as the enemy cavalry there is kind of not trying to tempt them too badly. Where's Jackson and his men? All right, Howard is advancing, but he's exposing his flank. A little bit, anyway. Nice. Tell him his battery's a little bit exposed here. We'll advance Barto a bit. Maybe he can take some of the pressure off that battery because they're going to die if they're the focus of any, you know, any enemy effort. Got to hope they shoot at Bartow instead. And let Pelham just hit him with canister without being the focus of anything. Although I guess they're just out of canister range, so that's not happening. B continues to have a slightly positive engagement score. This line, I don't think they can hold against all these numbers. But again, the point isn't so much to hold as it is to delay, 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 delay until Jackson shows up. We'll all withdraw back here onto Henry Hill. God. Is that not canister range? Oh, okay. They are in canister range now. Sherman's brigade with two artillery batteries is sported, so spotted, so they're gonna try and charge the uh, Ford here, I assume. You're not in very good defensive terrain. But it's still not very good defensive terrain. I'm trying to make sure the Ford is under under cover of guns, but it's just not. All right, 36 more minutes we've got to hold off here. Sherman's charging forward. Okay. Howard at least was temporarily driven off. Arto skirmishers coming in here behind Sherman's lines. Hopefully firing into his rear will hurt his morale enough. Oh shit, there's cavalry behind you. Yeah, I'd rather Bartow focus on, and again, that cavalry doesn't appear to be melee cavalry, they appear to be um, carbine cavalry, so they didn't really do anything. Alright, fire your canister into him. There you go, Howard suffering some can er, canister and point-blank volley fire. Sure, how long Barto can hold under the pressure. Rocker's doing well. B is hanging in there. Everybody's doing their duty thus far. 
And Sherman is driven back. Huzzah! Oh, whatever. There you go, Hampton's Legion. Driving Sherman back. Holding that Ford. I don't want these skirmishers to go in and try and drive off some of these batteries. Hampton's boys did splendidly, but they also lost pretty heavily. Arto's getting hit from two brigades, each of them substantially larger than his own. Imbedin's artillery and Penham's ar Pelham's artillery. Both doing good work. We'll see if B falls as he historically did. Alright, so Howard's being driven back. There you go. Alright, so Hunt's battery. I'm trying to whittle him down with Bartow. Take some of the pressure off Hampton's Legion. And he's actually hitting Ayer's battery here, so hopefully we get some captured enemy guns. Withdraw my cannons from this hill? Are you crazy? We're holding the line. Why would I withdraw them? Well, they're not regiments, bully. They're, they're brigades. So, I mean, the brigade size of 1,500 to 2,000, almost 3,000 men, brigades were that large. I guess you're talking about pull the artillery back because they're going to slow us down as we withdraw. Because I think we're about two minutes away from the next phase where we have to pull back from Matthews Hill to uh, the next hill. Okay, General, it seems the enemy outnumbers us. We must, we must retreat to reorganize our troops. Alright, well, I am following that script a little bit. your point we probably don't need to withdraw at least not yet but we are we're gonna give the artillery a little bit of a head start and then we'll pull the infantry back as well they are losing B's brigade especially is losing well actually Bartow as well the only brigade that really hasn't been savaged yet is Crocker and they're the ones in the uh, earthworks if you will Artillery set up here, get the supplies. I mean, cavalry did drive Barto skirmishers back. Sherman's making another effort. Enemy infantry are trying to cross the Stones Bridge, it would appear now. Fall back. I thought they don't turn their back when they fall back like that. Alright, so we're going to pull off Matthews Hill. Here comes Stuart's cavalry arriving. Them in that farmhouse, move the supply up. Regiments are not enlarged brigades. Uh, a brigade is made up of several regiments. So, a infantry brigade in the Civil War tended to have four or five regiments. 
A regiment's full strength size was a thousand men, but during the Civil War, brigades rarely ever uh, had a thousand men. That was sort of their paper strength. Usually regiments ranged from 200 to 400 men, typically, and a brigade would generally have around 1,500 to 2,500 men. Bully, your, your brigade, that's not, maybe you're referring to what a modern brigade is, but during the Civil War, a brigade, a battalion, a regiment was made up of battalions, and brigades were made up of regiments. So, what a brigade was, or a regiment was, or anything like that, that all changed in more modern times, I think. Um, but during the Civil War, it was very different. So you'd have companies, which would be grouped into battalions. Battalions would be grouped into regiments. And regiments would be grouped into brigades. A brigade would then be grouped into a division, which was grouped into a corps, which was uh, grouped into an army. Okay, we're gonna have to pull those guys back at some point here. Alright, B, you're actually gonna go port. Fuck out of there, what are you doing? Get the hell out of there. Alright. Yeah, actually, that's a good point, Neuhauser. During the Napoleonic Wars, uh, battalions in the uh, French army, I believe it was, is what we would typically think of American regiments during the Civil War. Battalions were grouped into brigades, generally. Alright, so we're pulling these troops out here, kind of at the double quick. They've broken our line in the north, so we're pulling these two brigades of ours back to uh, Henry Hill. Hell out of there, Lynch. Okay. You know, we could bend the line back and take these trees. Alright everybody, we are hanging in there. We defended Matthews Hill, we defended the Stone Bridge, we have since fallen back from both of those locations to the final objective here for the Confederacy on the defense of the battle or the attack on Henry Hill. So we need to hold with the forces that we have here for about another 50 minutes of game time, not real time, but in game time. And uh, if we do that, we will have Confederate reinforcements coming up onto the scene. So we're completing our withdrawal to Henry Hill. We formed almost a fishhook, similar to the Union position at Gettysburg, 
and uh, we'll await the enemy assault up this uh, steep hill and some good terrain, and uh, we'll see how things play out. With that being said, I am going to split this video, this battle, into two parts, given we're already at 30 minutes, so feel free to join me in tomorrow's video as we conclude the Battle of Bull Run. Thanks again for watching, guys, and until next time, I'm out.